This sign warns that a stroke, also called a CVA, is on its way. It's crucial that you know all the warning signs and symptoms as you can often prevent it. Many signs appear days before, up to seven days prior, so you can take steps to prevent the worst from happening to stop a stroke from actually occurring. This will be the topic of the video. After telling you the signs that come before a stroke, I'll also give you seven prevention tips. One tip can even reduce your chance of having a stroke by 40%, showing how important today's video topic is. Well, let's start with the nine signs that come before a stroke, or CVA. The first sign that a stroke is coming is an increase in blood pressure. When we talk about high blood pressure, it's important to know that strokes can be divided into two main groups, and high blood pressure increases the risk for both. Scientific studies have shown that days before, this increase can be even more pronounced, especially at the time of the stroke. So it can warn you that something's wrong so you can't take action. And what are these groups? And why does this happen? When we talk about stroke, it's important to divide it into ischemic stroke due to blockage either from fat buildup preventing blood from reaching a certain part of the brain or a clot that blocks and causes ischemia where blood can't reach to nourish that region. This type of ischemic stroke due to interrupted blood flow accounts for the majority of cases about 80 to 85%. There's another significant group, which is hemorrhagic stroke caused by bleeding. When a blood vessel bursts, it impairs nutrition and blood supply to that part of the brain, and high blood pressure greatly increases both factors, both groups, so it's crucial to pay attention to blood pressure measurements. Later, I'll discuss the values, but a good number here would be the famous 12 over 8 to avoid increasing your risk of a stroke also known as a cerebral vascular accident. When your blood pressure is rising without a known cause and stays high for days, it's a major red flag. Something might be wrong and it's often a trigger for stroke or blood flow blockage. High blood pressure can damage blood vessels and promote cholesterol and fat buildup. Also, if you already have a malformation in a blood vessel or if a vessel is weaker than normal, increased pressure can trigger an event. So so it's very important that you're aware of this sign. The second sign that may precede a stroke, a major red flag, is a decrease in strength on one side of the body or in a limb, arm, or leg, or both. This reduction in strength can be transient, which we call a mini stroke. Have you heard of this? This term isn't quite correct, but it's the most popular, which is why I'm using it here. This mini stroke or the correct term, which is transient ischemic attack, is when we have an interruption of blood flow and your body manages to reverse it without any lasting effects. Often this lasts for just a few hours. And why did I put the video title there, seven days before? Because this type, the transient attack or mini stroke, is a major warning sign. 20% of people who have this type, which leaves no lasting effects, will have a larger stroke within seven days or so. It's very important that you stay vigilant. Even if you've improved, you need to urgently investigate what's happening and why this decrease in strength occurred, okay? So that decrease in strength that improves quickly afterwards, within a few hours, sometimes a day, when you fully recover, is a warning sign. You might be having a mini stroke, which often precedes a full stroke that can have many lasting effects and be very serious. The third warning sign that a stroke may be coming is a decrease in sensitivity or a tingling sensation or numbness on one side or in one limb of the body. Just like I mentioned about the reduction in strength, here we're talking about numbness or changes in sensitivity as well. And why do you think I'm talking about one side of the body? This is one of the characteristics of a stroke. Depending on the region it affects, you'll have signs or symptoms in one part of the body, usually on the opposite side. If you have a stroke on the left side, the right side will show these signs. So, 
changes in sensitivity. Sometimes it can be just in the leg or just in the arm or both, but changes in sensitivity, tingling, you have to take into account because you might be having a mini stroke. And the fourth sign, also a big warning sign, is a change in speech, often slurred speech. When I worked in the ER, I remember many patients who were having a stroke or a mini stroke or TIA, their family members would say, look, he seems drunk, he's talking like he's drunk, his tongue is slurred. But what he was actually having was a stroke. So changes in speech, remember that. Sometimes they haven't had any alcohol, but they sound drunk. So it's a major warning sign. In other cases, it can affect speech differently. The person might not speak at all, which we call aphasia. Okay? It's also another type of change that can precede a heart attack. Depending on the affected area, since I'm talking about language changes, there might also be a change in comprehension. The person can speak, but they can't understand what's being said. It's another warning sign that's often not so obvious. So we have a change in comprehension or speech. It can precede a stroke. Sign number five, which studies show often precedes a stroke, is a headache. This headache has a characteristic. It's either more intense or progressive, different from your usual ones. So it's important to consider this too. Since headaches are common, I'll emphasize the atypical or very strong ones. If you have a severe headache, it's worth going to the ER, as it could be bleeding. The longer you wait, the higher the chance of sickly or more serious changes. That's why this video is so important. Besides teaching prevention tips, it's also crucial to recognize signs before or after it happens, see? This can happen days before you actually have a stroke. And sign number six, fatigue or tiredness. This one is more non-specific. I won't dwell on it much as various changes can cause this sign. However, in reports from stroke patients, many mentioned feeling more tired days before the event. So it's another sign to pay attention to. Number seven, is a change in vision. This change also tends to be sudden. It's not the gradual change where you sometimes can't read and need to stretch your arms to see. It's not the change you've always had. It's a change that appears suddenly, sometimes blurred vision or a sharp decrease in visual acuity happening very quickly. This can also be a sign that something's wrong and might lead to a stroke soon after. And sign number eight, Another warning sign that a stroke might be coming is a change in motor coordination. For driving, for example, or for washing dishes or sewing or using your phone, using a computer, for instance, you're having difficulty that you didn't have before because depending on the region being affected, this can also happen. Like sign number nine, which is a change in balance, a change when you walk, a change in gait, for example. It's harder to walk or climb stairs, you feel unbalanced, this can also be a sign that something's wrong and a stroke might be coming, or you might be having that mini stroke I mentioned, which can precede or already be a cerebral stroke. Very important. Why? Because many people only know about those signs I mentioned, right? Changes in sensation, changes in strength, these others are often forgotten. So it's important to pay attention to balance. Did you know that some strokes only show this one sign, uh, just a change in balance? Now, what are the seven points to avoid that will help reduce your risk significantly? You'll see one that can reduce it by 40%, so stay tuned to find out which one. Well, there are seven. What are these seven? The first way to reduce your stroke risk is to manage your blood pressure levels. You knew this one, right? I mentioned it in the video. This is also the most talked about you have to watch your blood pressure. I've explained the reasons, so I won't dwell on it, but values like 140 90th already increase your risk of a stroke, and it doesn't need to be both numbers. Even 140 increases risk. It could be 140 70th, for example, or the second number, which is called diastolic hypertension. If someone has 120 90th, for instance, but 120 is a good number, right? Or 120. However, 90 is already considered high blood pressure. 
So you need to look at both numbers and take care of your blood pressure. The second way to prevent stroke is by managing blood sugar levels. Did you know that even slightly elevated levels can have consequences and increase cardiovascular diseases like the risk of stroke? So why control blood sugar levels? When blood sugar rises, excess glucose molecules can harm blood vessels, potentially damaging them. Just like I mentioned with high blood pressure, this can also happen with increased blood sugar. Many ask, why does high blood sugar cause heart attacks? Actually, it causes strokes too, but this video focuses on stroke. It can damage blood vessel interiors, facilitating cholesterol buildup and weakening vessels. So, monitor your blood sugar levels. Number three, another way to prevent stroke. You already know this. We won't dwell on it. Don't smoke. Smoking can also damage blood vessels. I'm talking about rolled cigarettes, e-cigarettes, regular cigarettes, and cigars too. So no smoking, right? Avoid tobacco use in general. Number four is engaging in physical activities. It can be any physical activity you have access to and enjoy. I'll just highlight one value here. 150 minutes per week divided into three or more sessions. So 50 minutes three times a week or 30 minutes five times a week is a good way to care for your heart and brain, preventing stroke. The fifth way is by controlling diseases that greatly increase the risk. Did you know there's a condition? I'll draw attention to three diseases here, three conditions that can greatly increase risk but are controllable. The first is obstructive sleep apnea. Ever been told you snore a lot while sleeping? Do you wake up feeling very tired? Or do you wake up during sleep feeling suffocated? It's not just a sensation, actually. There's an interruption in oxygen flow, reducing tissue oxygen levels. This has bad metabolic effects, raising pressure levels, potentially causing high blood pressure, increased blood sugar, and higher stroke risk. So we need to look at your sleep patterns. If you wake up often, feel suffocated or snore heavily, that's a big red flag. We can diagnose and treat this condition. The second issue is thyroid changes, which can cause high blood pressure in both hypo and hypothyroidism. It's very common to see patients with hormonal imbalances who have serious blood pressure issues, greatly increasing their risk of stroke. The third condition I want to highlight here, which is also a major cause of stroke, is atrial fibrillation, a very common arrhythmia. But what's the problem with this arrhythmia, atrial fibrillation? It can send blood clots to your brain, causing interruption of blood flow. So proper treatment is needed, sometimes blood thinners, to prevent this, okay? About the second disease I mentioned, thyroid issues, it's important to note that it's a problem before diagnosis or when you know you have it, but the treatment isn't working or is inadequate. If you have thyroid issues, but your treatments are good and working well, you don't have an increased risk, okay? No need to worry. And number six, another one I want to highlight here is cholesterol. Did you know that increased cholesterol levels have been proven to raise the risk of stroke? I'll emphasize here the bad cholesterol, LDL cholesterol. When it's elevated, you do have a higher chance. It's important to note that there's no fixed value for LDL cholesterol. It depends on each person's risk. The doctor can calculate this and determine your therapeutic goal. That's why I won't give a specific value here. There are other types like HDL cholesterol. For this, we have a value preferably above 40. Some references put it above 50. But this is the good cholesterol. The higher, the better. Another often forgotten type is triglycerides. This one preferably less than 150. Managing cholesterol is key to reducing stroke risk. Number seven, the last can cut stroke risk by 40%. Studies show recommended intake reduces stroke risk 40%. But studies also found that Many countries like the US, Germany, Spain, Portugal, and even South America consumed more than double the recommended 5 grams of salt, 10, 11, or 12 grams. So it's crucial to keep this in check. How can you manage this? Avoid preserved foods like canned hearts of palm, olives, pickles, and processed meats such as salami, parma ham, copa, salametti, and turkey breast. A single pack of instant noodles can contain 70% of your daily sodium needs. 
Eating these foods greatly increases your risk of excess salt intake, which can lead to stroke. Steer clear of ready-made foods like boxed burgers, frozen pizzas, and lasagna, the kind you buy in a box at the supermarket. So avoid boxed foods, packaged foods, and don't overuse salt in your cooking. And these foods too, if you avoid the processed meats I mentioned, you'll be doing a great thing for your health. Besides the other benefits, right? Here I'm focusing only on reducing the risk of stroke, but it's very important to look at this. If you check the label, you'll probably see that you're consuming more than 2 grams of sodium per day. Not to mention some drinks too, which have sodium, a high concentration of sodium. But by avoiding these foods, you'll be doing yourself a favor. Did you notice I talked about cholesterol? There are foods that can help your cholesterol, increasing good cholesterol and decreasing bad cholesterol. There's even one food that can improve this ratio by 8%. It's crucial that you know what this food is to reduce the risk of cardiovascular diseases. I'll leave a more detailed video here where I talk about these foods and cholesterol. I suggest you watch it. Take care. See you next time. Don't forget to leave your comment below, okay? I want to know.